he let me fly his airplane with my brother in it, and we flew down and landed on a sandbar, and we caught silvers like crazy. Yeah. But he, I mean, he's a mentor, one yeah. of my best friends, and he, we, I mean, we fished and we flew, and <laughs> we, oh my, how, I, how did it, now, did we miss something here as far as the flight? So you you were flying a plane. Uh, yeah, back then in my Alaska days, so, I did. So how did I, how did you get get to a point where you're flying planes? That was Tim Rollins talking about his days as a hunting guide in Alaska and some amazing stories about how he first got into flying bush planes. We are on episode number twenty seven of the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. How's it going, everyone? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. Before I get into the intro, I wanted to remind you to follow the show on Instagram at instagram.com slash wetflyswing. In today's episode, I interviewed Tim Rollins, a spay casting teacher with a history and knowledge you have to hear today. We talk about his early days in Kamloops, his YouTube spay video library, a great rod company to check out at super low prices, and the significance of Yoda and Padwan. Don't miss this as Tim tells a few stories from his Alaska days that include poachers, psychological misfits, and flying his first plane solo after only 13 hours of training. Without further ado, here's Tim Rollins from LineSpeedJedi.com. How's it going, Tim? It's going great, Dave. It's finally finally good to get hooked up with you and get going on this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. This is uh this is going to be great. I've uh Yeah, we're just talking there about the uh different casting uh, episodes we've had and I know we've had at least two uh big ones where we talked about spay casting and you know, you're you do a lot of videos and teach people about spay casting. So this is going to be awesome to get into this and dig into it. Are you ready to get started? You bet. All right. So I always uh, start off here just with a little bit of history on, you know, your background, how you got into fly fishing and, and steelhead and, and then how the whole linespeedjedi.com, how, you know, maybe how all that came to be, if you could just talk about that for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I I basically grew up on Pudding Creek in the Willamette Valley there, which is not your pristine uh trout or steelhead stream by any means but it was a really cool place to grow up and i you know learned to fish with worms and crowded tails and we'd catch chub and cut them up and and uh we do the old fork stick you know throw the bait out and stick your rod on a fork stick and wait for that wait for that thing to start bouncing man and that's like that's like the uh the gateway drug to the tug is the drug <laughs> just just watching that rod bounce you know and picking up and wondering you know what treasures on the end of the line so i was fortunate enough enough to uh get to meander down there with my dogs and and fish and hang out and camp and uh it was really kind of what got me started fishing and i always you know my dream when I got older, I wanted to be a steelheader so bad. Hmm. And my, my dad wasn't a steelheader, but for some reason, you know, I knew kids whose dad's steelheaded and I just wanted so bad to, to be a steelheader. And so, uh, I wanted two things. I wanted to be a steelheader and I wanted to fish. I wanted to go to a fly in remote wilderness lake in, uh, in British Columbia hmm. and, uh, fish for trout so those were like big things to me and i was always uh i kind of had to wait but but eventually i got to do both those things and uh i didn't really start fly fishing i self-taught myself to fly fish and i remember the biggest breakthrough i had with overhead or casting with a single-handed fly rod you know i bought one from pay less or someplace yeah. like that and i somehow got it lined and uh i remember when i figured out that i figured out one of the five essentials on my own 
which is you have to pause after your stroke to let the line roll out hmm. so you could load your rod for the forward stroke. And and the light came on for me then as far as casting. And then fishing, you know, it was just hit and miss. I didn't I didn't really have any fly fishing mentors at that time, but I, there was an old guy up in uh, – up in British Columbia, an old pioneer guy. He he started this fishing lodge by uh, barging like a 42 barging, rafting hmm. a 42 Willie Street Jeep down this big long lake, and then basically cutting a road into a Jeez. remote lake. Starting, you know, building the the. Uh, it started with wall tents. You know, there were wall tents yep. with frames and. Uh, log sides and then they you know eventually build a lodge but anyway hmm. uh, he taught me about the the uh, there's some kind of a sedge ha- hatch up there and he taught me about the tom thumb you know he mm-hmm. so i could i'd walk into these lakes you know and and uh just have a heyday one one night in particular i uh you know you could see I'm feeding. I was up in this lake by myself, on a in a little tin boat, just casting to rising fish, and just hmm. you know, I was so excited. I'd either snap them off and or uh, uh, finally settle down and slow down enough to set the hook, and you know, land quite a few of them, and then then just walking back in the dark or the near dark and and hearing that generator running <laughs> uh, and the log you know the log yeah. buildings and seeing a light a light you know and and walking in that that uh That's it was like i uh, yeah it was just amazing that 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 was happening to me that i experienced that and i was you know probably just fresh out of high school oh, and wow. that that is like my one of my favorite memories of of dry fly fishing Mm -hmm. and probably of just fly fishing in general it really and it was simple i i just i can't deal with too complicated fishing strategies like with a lot of i like either dry fly fishing or swinging a wet fly or uh you know stripping big streamers but I don't – I'm not real technical about, you know, having a a teeny weeny – Yeah, mini you know, that I, size you know, 22. That, yeah, I just can't I, – I mean, I, I like the idea and I – every once in a while I think I'm going to do it and I'll try it and it'll – you know, I can't even thread the – Yep. <laughs> tip it through the ideal. So I just kind of made the decision, you know, that I was I was going to have fun – going to do it how I like to do it and if that just included swinging and stripping and dry flies and the occasional nymph then I was going to you know that's pretty much what I'm happy with nice nice so that was uh and so now where was this this was up in in BC or up in yeah yeah that was in British Columbia just in the interior there those all those lakes up there like with the Kamloops rainbows yeah gotcha gotcha yeah. wow so you so basically you got a taste uh, fully the taste of the uh, the wilderness experience and that whole thing and then and then how did that well and you grew up you said on the pudding so now this is you're talking pudding um, so the tributary like Malala basin tribu- tributary to the Will- Willamette area yeah, yeah right so there weren't a lot of uh, well, there's some steelhead, but not a ton of steelhead. Not not like you're going to swing up fish like you would some other areas. What what was the first river where you started actually swinging for steelhead? Uh, actually, that where I actually started swinging, I would say was the Deschutes mm. because up until I was like when I started steelhead, you know, I went with the the pencil lead and the corky and the oaky and all that stuff and fished on the coast a little bit and and then i got into hardware and i probably one of the best books i've ever read on fishing is uh herzog's Mm. spoon Mm -hmm. spoon book on steelhead and uh i was a rabid hardware checker uh i mean 10 12 years ago i just would go yep 
crazy on the Deschutes swing and spoons and oh, spinners. Yeah. And I don't know how I even, oh, you, you know, I'd like have a, a gear rod and then a bobber rod, you know, and then later a, a spay rod and, and I'd just walk for miles and come back, you know, with either a broken rod or a bunch of lost spoons. And, <laughs> yeah, and you know, a lot of times we were catching fish too. So it was just fun. And it's more like hunting than fishing. But I somehow, you know, a lot of guys were using spay rods. And, and I think uh, some crazy fishing guy I met was all he wanted to go swing for for steelhead on the Deschutes so mm -hmm. I brought my one-hander and he brought his one-hander and the other guy brought his and uh single-hander and we you know just started swinging with them with our single-handers and mm -hmm. anyway he got to talking about it and for some reason we just thought oh yeah we should have spay rods so I just you know I started out with an angler's roost and and which is the best, I man, if a guy's going to get into it and you don't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. angler's roost rods are the best deal going, you know, uh, Cabela's, you can get their stuff on hmm. clearance for really cheap too. Oh, that, wow. that would be a great way. Oh man, like that Todd Hirano, 808 steelheader, he's got a blog, he's on, he's on spay pages. That guy has more Cabela's switch rods and i think he's got spay rods but they are a tremendous great value they're from everything i know they're excellent hmm. sticks they got the warranty and that and that's uh man warranty is everything for anybody looking yep. for a new rod the thing about the the angler's roost is uh they don't per se have a warranty but anything that's ever gone wrong I've called Johnny and he's just, or text or emailed him and he, he's just good to go. Good to go. He'll set you up. He'll, you know, if you don't like something, he'll give you money back. He'll give, send you sections. He'll send you a section for any random rod you can think of. It just, and it's, you know, 30 bucks. That's cool. So to me, that's an excellent warranty. The guy who designs those things is a very fine rod designer i mean you, you hmm. if you talk to steve godshell uh I'll, steve designs lines for miser and uh, anderson and he's he's quite the engineer himself but he he's tested all of those anglers roost rods and hmm. the flex patterns and stuff are very they're they they're uniform and they're yeah. proper, you know. They okay. they on quite a few of those, he's really nailed it. You know, they're not all maybe perfect, and and if you do buy one of those rods and it's ready made, you know, the components they're kind of cheap and cheesy and what have you. But man, the they're actions are great. They're good good using rods, you know, for a guide or somebody who's gonna yeah beat beat stuff up beat them up. They're well, just and that's exactly what I do. I just grab a handful and throw them in my car and go. <laughs> nice. Oh, I, I got them in my trunk. I got them in my car. And uh, I don't, you know, I would not do that with a Sage Method at this point. No, totally. totally. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll leave a link for those, uh, for that rod and some and anything else we talk about here at uh, wetflyswing.com slash 27. And, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a great resource. We're always glad to help provide extra resources, especially for people just getting started. So that's cool. So, so yeah, so basically you kind of got going, I mean, on the Deschutes, one of the, you know, the destination spots for sure. And, and how did you, and then how did all that from, you know, starting there roll into the line speed Jedi, how your website, how did, how did you get into becoming a teacher? Well, I kind of think of myself more of a sharer. I, <laughs> I, I just share what's going on with me at the at at that point in time and I I just I've seen so many guys struggling and and I think I can can kind of help them out you know it's not like I'm a have my PhD in hmm. in uh casting or anything but I can generally stop the bleeding if a guy's new and just starting out so anyway this guy 
this guy named Ken the Steelhead Junkie that fishes the Deschutes is just a wild steelhead junkie. That's mm-hmm. just what he is. And he, you know, when nobody else is fishing that thing in the fall because it's like 12 above, yeah. he's drift, drifting that thing from Mecca down to to uh, Trout Creek or whatever. And anyway, he's like, yeah, if you want to go, you know, just help me help me pay for the the uh, taxi, the ferry guy or whatever yeah, you call it. Shuttle dude and and uh, we'll go. So he he and I had it all planned out. You know, I'd I'd seen guys do double spays on the Deschutes a lot, and so what I figured out was when it was when I was going to cast this thing. He had it all set up. He had a Reddington that you know thirteen three RS four seven weight. That was a really nice rod mm-hmm. and. And he, you know, showed me where that he goes, you know, he showed me where the head was or something like that or where I should start, you know, how to how much line to cast. And so I figured what I'd do as I was going to set set the fly, set the anchor, and then I was going to do a roll cast. And I did and it worked out perfectly. And I just I just kind of, you know. I I got it and I could somewhat fish right away and then I, but I still carried my from then out I just added a spay rod to the arsenal I packed with me hmm. whenever I was fishing on the Deschutes and then uh, how I actually got addicted to them I I I just got tired of I'd buy really good spay hardware to check and i lost so much of that hmm. that and it and I, it was all totally about numbers i wanted to catch as many as i could hmm. and then one time i brought only my spay rod and my other buddies one was fishing bobbers on a on a one-hander the other was fishing hardware and and we all started off and like i I casted up. I didn't even swing my fly, but the first crack out of the box before they even were gone, I picked one up at the head of the run, oh, and sweet. then I fished. The, yeah, I fished that run while they were off fishing their gear, and I fished that run, and then I left, and then I came back to it, and then I picked up this huge hog hmm. at the end of the next run. So I think that was kind of. I mean, yep. it the was just, moment. yeah, it, it was, it was just, it was, it was just luck. And there is so much luck involved because those guys are very good fishermen, but it was kind of like, I picked two up and, and the, and I didn't, it totally changed me from, walking for miles and leaping from place to place and just fishing like a madman to going to the run. I mean, I still will catch myself running to the head of the run. Even if I'm just casting, I just, I get so excited about just casting that I just can't wait to start and fishing's the same way. But, but I, what I will do, what swinging has got me to do is to, Go to the head of the run and methodically work through and fish that thing, even if it's two or three steps between casts. And it's basically settled me down to where now, instead of, you know, I don't even care about catching one, <laughs> I'm more concerned with fiddling around with my casting yep. and hopefully get, you know, get my, I, I want my kid. To, to hook his first steelhead. That's oh, yeah. what I'm into right now. Yep. So catching them all, it's, to me, it's not that big of a deal. It's, the main thing for me is uh, being with my friends who fish and uh, being with my kid and, and getting him into his first steelhead. For so sure. For sure. That's what I, that's what I like to do. Yep. 
Yep, that's what uh, that's pretty much what it's all about. That's there's no question, no question about that. Well, how about we just ju- jump into a few uh, few questions and tips? I always love to hear. You know, I know anybody that wants to find your stuff, you know, they can just go to linespeedjedi.com and take a look at some of your videos and stuff. And uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, what would you say if you had somebody new and you had to you know give them a, a tip, for a, kind of a casting tip? What what would you tell somebody that's that's just getting going? What what are some things that could help them get a better start? Uh, I would make sure, probably the first thing I would say is, let's just say that, that he's Skagit casting or he has a Skagit outfit. Mm-hmm. I would make sure that, that you have your running line and your Skagit head and that you have a, a 10 foot or 12 foot sink tip, like T8 or T11. Mm-hmm. And then a, a moderate fly, like a like a pick your pocket for maybe if you're casting T11 or a, a hobo spay, which is a marabou tied on a Waddington shank, and and I, and the reason I say that is because I have helped guys who are you know they're casting but they want to get better, and so we look at their outfit and they have like. A uh, uh, Skagit head, a sink tip, a poly leader, a mono leader. Right. Uh, you know, you know, it's like. Yep. Or they have a a mo tip and a cheater and and all this. It's like there is so much mm-hmm. information. <laughs> like Eric Hel- Eric Helm says, there is a miasma or a miasma of obfuscation because we've made it so complicated. Yeah. So the first thing I'd say is. Skagit head. If you're if you're going to skagit cast, which most people in our neck of the woods do, mm-hmm. a ten or twelve foot straight T eight sink tip or T eleven for the winter for a heavier fly, and say a three foot uh, straight mono, say twelve pound maximum ultra green, and and the biggest thing I would say is it. It really is just a roll cast. Mm-hmm. So there's 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 two parts to it. You have to set your anchor, and the other important thing I would say is it's all about the wind. So don't you know don't cast with your head on the downwind side of yep. your D loop, or or you can hook yourself. So be careful, but. What I would say is to 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 don't worry about tearing at first. Mm-hmm. Just get that anchor with land your fly about a rod length away from you, and just uh, keep your rod tip kind of up in the air, and just make a nice circle with no. Don't shoot any line at first. You know sweep into a nice circle without worrying about peeling the line off the water really it'll it'll take care of itself and um try not to make it more complicated than it is Mm -hmm. all it is is setting the fly and then sweep around to where you can do a roll cast that is for a rank for a rank beginner sure for a more intermediate guy uh i would I would say to uh, it, it's you. You have to do it to where it's not making you sore. So try to to be good about setting your anchor fairly close, like around a rod length or so, and then um, making that D loop nice and big and fat, and and not rushing, but not laying your fly rod back, you know, back on the water and having to rip it out of the water. So if you start with just the head and then uh, get any kind of a cast going, um, then you can, then you can graduate into shooting a little, a little line and so forth. But if you can get it into your head that it's just a roll cast 
and put yourself into position to make that roll cast and don't try to cast too far to begin with and then and then you can you can uh, do building blocks mm-hmm. and um, you know make that D loop big uh, the th- the thing about casting is is it to really do it properly it it really does take um, it just takes it takes practice and there's no Mm-hmm. No getting around that it just takes a lot of time on the water and uh, and practice and making that D loop big. So because if you and I and I've seen it time after time, um, guys that actually look like they're you know they can handle a fly rod and they can handle a spay rod and they're they're casting their fish and hard, but like. By the end of the day, they their arm is sore or their whatever they're just beat up, yep. and it really, it is true hmm. that um, you uh, it can be fairly effortless and should be effortless to to make it to make it right. And even even with the Skagit heads, like I was out casting the other days trying to figure out how to make a video by myself, and I noticed some people were watching me. And I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna fail a cast. I'm gonna every one of these is going, and and what I caught myself doing, and because of the the Skagit head had a 15 foot floating tip on there, was no matter how bad the setup or the D loop, I could still make it look like I was casting, but I was really just prying it off the water with the weight of that head. It wasn't yeah. proper casting. And that's really what you should set out to do is cut the hook off your fly, go to a place where you can stand in one place and figure out a cast you want to do and then do do it for an hour or two Hmm. until you, until you just, you know, you'll, you'll do good, you'll do bad, you'll go through slumps, but you just stick it out for, for a couple hours and pretty soon, you, you know, you'll start developing some coordination. And th- that is like the number one tip. Hmm. Go cut your hook off and cast in one place for two hours. Mm-hmm. That That is entirely the, – hmm. that was uh, – William Olson told me that once online, and it was probably some of the best advice I ever got. And now I, you know, I cast for – with long bellies, it takes me two hours just to get to where I can cast the thing. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like hitting the sweet spot is <laughs> is it just takes practice. There's no getting around yeah. to it. Yeah, that's now it's a great tip. The and and when you do that, just focusing on a single cast and not trying to do every single cast, but just do one for an hour or two. That's that's the best recommendation. I. I would, and you can. What you can do is figure out a cast that you you can actually do two, and 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 what'll happen? Like if I'm gonna, this isn't schedule casting, but for long bellies, you can single spay it, and then you can snake roll it back to the single spay position. And then that way you can kind of work on two casts. Mm, yeah. So on your on your what you could do is uh, you could do a, a double spay. Say if you're skagit casting or using a waterborne anchor, you could use a double spay, and then you can um, switch to your left hand or your cack hand and do like a snap T, and then cast back down to the dangle, mm. which puts you in position to do another double space so you're working on two casts yep you know you can really do it any way you want if be depending on if you're moving water or uh or on a in a pond or something but yeah pick mm-hmm. one cast maybe two and just pick a favorite and get really really good at it and uh and then you can build build from there once you get the concept 
that it's just a roll cast, then everything else is just a setup for the roll cast, mm-hmm. you know, and set up for uh, casting away from the wind, you know, or mm-hmm. in so you won't be in danger of hooking yourself. That's real important. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, that's great. So, but yeah, basically, I mean, you've been putting in a lot of, a lot of hours on the time, a lot of hours on the water and, and you're in, like we mentioned before, so a lot of this, you have taken some videos of yourself going through kind of documenting your journey essentially. Right. And that's that's, exactly. Yeah. So you've gone, so people can go out there and take a look at a, a video from, you know, basically how, how early, like when you first got started all the way up through to where you're at now, or or what, what would you say if somebody was going to, who hadn't been to your YouTube channel or or your site, what what would you say is how it's uh, displayed or, you know, how, how would they find the info best? Uh, that is a good question. And I think you made the comment when we first were talking online that I needed to organize my site, which is excellent advice, but I haven't, I haven't really done that, but I would, it would, I would say, uh, I've tried to have what I feel are my best articles on the on the front page of of my website, and um, but I would for a beginner I'd watch um, I think it's called uh, Skagit Casting for Rank Beginners oh, and yeah. Troubled Spay Casters. Yep, that's that's I do the uh, this D loop drill that was on the old uh, uh, what that guy's name. Old time hmm. long belly guy did Roderick Haig Brown or somebody like that, mm-hmm. or maybe I'm mixing him up with somebody yeah, yeah. else. But that, but it's it's got that D loop drill, and that D loop drill is an excellent drill to do if you're uh, uh, confused about how the sketch. If you're struggling with your casting, I would suck in a little bit of line. Mm-hmm. And do the D loop drill and just do little bitty casts and build on them. Anyway, uh, but the what happened with you know when I started the website, it was more like I wanted to to learn how to do something online. Yeah, you know, I I figured if I'm going to be monkeying around on Spay Page and Facebook, I'm going to start something and be productive. And so I, you know, I wanted to learn about a, doing an online, uh, having an online presence. So I thought, well, you're supposed to pick something that you know if you're going to have a blog. So I, mm-hmm. you know, I, I know some spay casting stuff. You know, I know I know about sync tips and stuff. So I'll, you know, I'll start a spay casting deal. And I didn't know what it was going to be. I just jumped in there and started doing stuff and then and i have done a lot of writing you know writing short stories and humor and i've you know i've won some contests and got Hmm. some stuff published and i thought well this will be a great perfect fit great yeah i thought this will be a great avenue for my writing and the writing like nobody even notices it it's (laughs) like but google Google does (laughs) yeah Yeah. right yeah and 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 so it, it is, there is that, but I started noticing, you know, I was working over in the Valley or I working all over Oregon and everywhere I work, I'm always looking for a place to fish. And so I, or, or to cast. And so I started, I was like, okay, well, I'll just make casting videos and stuff, you know, and, and, uh, so I'd video myself casting. I didn't think much of it. I just didn't know what to do. So I just started doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my, one of my videos I posted on YouTube and I'm like, okay guys, here's me doing some Scandi casting, you know? And, and so this guy, uh, Cezanne, I can't remember. Cool Mm -hmm. guy. He doesn't show up there much, but he, I, I bought a Berkheimer from him once Mm and good, you know, good community there. And he's like, yeah, that's not spake. That's not, scandy casting you're not that's not even underhand and i'm like oh okay so so and then he he was like you know you gotta go watch mortensen and and 
though, you know, mm -hmm. uh, those guys and, you know, here's some videos and I was like, okay. And then, uh, there's this guy named cloner on there, Yanis Panitz. And this guy is the most elegant and fabulous caster that I have seen as far as the Scandi style. Hmm. And he's like, he's like, yeah, you got to do, you know, you got to sweep with your bottom hand and use your bottom hand. He gave me all this, this, uh, advice. And then he's like, he makes me a, a custom, uh, instructional video for hmm. me. Wow. And it's like, it's professional quality. It's like 30 minutes long. It's excellent. It's, <laughs> and it's like he went totally out of his way and he made this video for me. And I, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And so for the next, it'll be two years here, I totally concentrated on trying to figure out how to truly use my bottom hand you know and not just yep. talk about it it's it's in the past casting it was it was i had a funky kind of cast i mean i it worked good and i wasn't beating myself up and they went a long ways and it was pretty cool but using the bottom hand just meant okay i'm going to remember to pull with my bottom hand this time and so when you start casting properly which his his uh take is modern scandinavian casting that's what he does mm -hmm. but it morphs well into uh spay casting the correct way because you you know you sweep start off sweeping with your bottom hand so it's in position for the right. forward stroke and and i learned how i mean like guys i what what i have like bruce crook from spay pages and uh brian Steiskel, who was like second at spay rama this year hmm. tim uh, arsenot these guys are so nice and, and not to mention my buddies on there like greg uh, buddha one and and uh ben from you know anything i need they'll send it to the the, hmm. the pro guys like crack and those guys and zach williams has been good peter charles if yep. i have a question and i'm like hey what's you know i, I want to get the straight scoop between uh, janice panitz and those guys that i mentioned all i have to do is contact them and they'll be I'm like, hey, what's the deal on the? How do you, you know, how do I improve this? And they'll be straightforward and tell me what I need to do. And so it's like I got these great guys that are willing to help me, and it's a, it's such an awesome resource that um, I don't know. I guess it works well. Is I just feel really fortunate and blessed that so many excellent excellent casters and fishermen and and ed ward oh, has yeah. been so awesome you know uh he's he just that guy is like he's a genius i'm convinced yeah. <laughs> and he's very talented he's an excellent caster and um i don't know he he's been through so much hmm. with his i mean it, he's just a cool guy guy and he's he's been very helpful and it's very amazing that just a guy can ask questions and and, and have some very top professionals and members like of the gale force casting team oh, yeah uh to say you know to tell me the straight up scoop about how to do x y and z and some of the stuff they're like they're like this is just for you they won't i you know, it's not super secret, but it's like right. really cool. Well, that, that's and, what I was going to say that, uh, I mean, I think part of the reason I think those people probably that you mentioned, and I'll provide links, like I said before at uh, wetflyswing.com slash 27, I'll, <laughs> I'll do my best to, uh, get all those names down and, and link out to some of these people because I think those are great resources. But for you, I mean, 
you know, you put yourself out there, you know, you put yourself out there online with your videos of documenting yourself. And I mean, I think people appreciate that and they see you, you know, and you're helping a lot of people too. I mean, whether you, uh, you know, you, you downplay it a little bit, but, um, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that, you know, we're all kind of experts, right? There's all, all always people that are below you in level. So, right. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of people out there and, and even from years to come, that are going to watch your videos and they're going to learn from you. So I think they're, I think they're just giving it back to you. They, they see what you're doing. Yeah. They, they've always been so great and, uh, and it is, and, and that's the thing. I think if you just like, uh, you know, I did a few instructional videos, and uh, you know, my mentor uh, Janice, he he's like, man, I don't know, you 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 gotta. I don't know if you're ready for this, man. He was very very uh, very honest with me. If he sees something on a video that I'm doing he, i know about it right away he's a, an excellent mentor hmm. if he sees you know like i'm casting i got creep in my cast he'll tell me about it mm-hmm. and he's he's like i don't think you're ready to be doing instructional videos and i'm like oh it's okay i'll just tell him i don't know what i'm doing and and that uh, or not that i i'm like i'll just tell him you know that this is just my journey and i'm mm-hmm. learning to or and our you know if i do something wrong it's just uh an opportunity to to point back at it and say, now this yep. is what I did wrong here. It's all about, I, I don't really care. Uh, I mean, it's just kind of all about, I, I try to like to, to not, <laughs> yeah. to not be too emotionally caught up. If it's me making the mistake, Hey, that's an opportunity for somebody to learn. It's a great opportunity for me to learn. And, if there's one thing that that all of this casting has taught me is that it's it's just so much learning. I learn every time I go out and cast. I learn something or relearn something or get better at something and I I just I just love learning stuff, you know. Yeah. I just totally that's what I do and and so I share what I've learned and try to bake, break things down into itty bitty, uh, you know, baby steps, and then build on those. Because you know, when I grew up and stuff, I I struggled, man. I, you know, I had some OCD tendencies as far, as far as like not not because I was not because I was. Uh, real particular about neatness but because i was like uh totally if i didn't know how to do something i would be so confused about whether it was right or not that a lot of times the instruction i received there was a lot of things that went without saying and because of that Hmm. i had lots of questions about everything you know is this good enough do I have to spend an hour? Am I doing a good job with this task? If I do, I do do it perfectly. How come? How come the guy I'm working with can whip through it in five minutes, and I'm struggling with it right. for a half hour because I don't know what is what is good enough and what isn't? And so, I I say all that to say that I try to I try to say what goes without should go without saying because i think Mm -hmm. i think everybody needs the blanks filled in yep so that's the kind of i just try to tell it as real as i can and and the only thing i can add to the casting thing is no matter no matter uh how much you know the only thing that's really going to make you good is practice Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's all about time on the water which is which is great because that's where we want to be exactly exactly that's cool so uh so yeah maybe you could clarify i want just so i don't forget on the line speed uh jedi the naming how how that came to be can you do a quick little rundown is that just uh you know popped in your head one day yeah basically it did it was like 
Well, Poppy from the Red Shed, that that guy, there's a resource right there, man. If you if you need a line, he can usually let you try it for free. Oh, and really? that's that yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Red cool. Shed, Fly Shop, All right. Poppy, Cummings. Nice. Uh, and, and Linda. They're awesome people. And it's like it, here's another value bomb that I'll drop before uh-huh. I get to the line speed thing. Yeah. If you're gonna buy a spay outfit, man, try as many as you can. It's like getting married. <laughs> you you, you got to go and and fish one. And what Poppy provides is, you know, if you don't you, you say you have a rod and you don't know how to line it, mm-hmm. then get three or four lines for it and all he needs is a credit card and he'll send you the lines and you send back the ones you don't want. Huh. He's done that with the Airflow. Sweet. Uh, he's done it with the Gale Force, which are fabulous, amazing lines that James Chalmers designs. And, I mean, uh, it's if you're going to buy a spay outfit, try one out and make sure you like it. Because if you don't, uh, I bought a like a, Six hundred and fifty dollar trout spay once, custom made because I was just convinced that that was the rod, and I got it, and I like I sold it like now. <laughs> it it just wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Poppy Red Shed. Okay. And any, anyway, okay, getting back to the line speed jetty. Excuse me, line speed Jedi. Poppy always he has his spay clave up there, and when he'd announce it on spay pages, he'd say you know. So and so is gonna, uh, we're gonna eat at such and such a time, and then the Jedi are gonna show up uh-huh. at X it, time. And which spay, cla- which spay clave is this? <coughs> Excuse me, that's the uh, the clear water spay clave. Oh, okay. In sept, I think it's usually in September, uh-huh. and it's they do it's a cool deal because Poppy's, you know, he's all about. He's just a great, just a. Old school, straightforward, mm-hmm. tell it like it is, family, family's his deal, you know. He's got pictures of his grandkids on his website cool. kind of deal. But anyway, so, and I just, you know, one time Travis Johnson said, line speed is everything, or <laughs> as he would say, line speed, line speed is everything. And so I, I thought, you know, well, that would be cool, Line Speed Jedi. That's a cool name if mm-hmm. I ever have a website. That's what it's going to be. You know, which I I have very real uh, understanding of just how good my casting is. So I I understand that when you know I went to my I went to a, uh, a spay competition, distance comp casting tournament in Portland at the. Uh, at the Westmoreland Casting Ponds, and like Simon was there hmm. the, the, from Next Cast, and Greg, uh, who I think he works for Berkheimer now, and Next Cast, he was there. Those guys are like, I think they both finished in the finals at SOR, and Travis Johnson was there, and you know, I was there. I had been casting all summer with my 10 weight sage, you know, and I just thought I was going to be phenomenal. Because I was, you know, so I go there. I didn't even know how to get in the pond. <laughs> and I have my little sage and I'm like, they. so they set up the buoys and stuff. You know, it's a 40 degree angle change and you're in the water up to your crotch, you know. And and so I'm there with my, my TCX 10 weight, you know, and my fall favorite 70 footer thinking I'm going to really do some cool long casts and like my best cast for barely even making it to the hundred hundred foot mark and so it's like holy cow you know hmm. this is this is weird so anyway i met this cool guy named ken uh ken from california he has a bruce and walker and he has a gale force like the two top best awesome comp rods. And he goes, well, 
we shut the place down casting, practicing that before the contest that afternoon, maybe it was a Friday or something. And he's like, well, whichever one I don't use, you can use the other one. So hmm. I got to do my first competition with a, you know, $185 line and a $2,000, $2,500 rod, you know, wow. it was like, so anyway, Travis comes, of course, and all these guys, all these guys are there. And like, I, I kept my cool and I completed the cast. I'd never picked up a comp rod before. And like one time I wrapped the line around my face and I got the line caught in that little, you know, that little knot on the top of your baseball cap. Yeah. I like wrapped the line around <laughs> that, you know, so I'm all tangled up out there, but I kept my cool. I accomplished the cast and my casts were like, my longest was like maybe 131 or 133. And then Travis comes out there and he's like casting like 170 or 165. Huh. So I said all that to say I have a pretty realistic view of how good my casting is and how much I need to com improve. And, and, you know, Travis and those guys, they're the Jedi. Mm -hmm. uh, but so that's my goal. It's just that my brand and my website, yep. I know that I have a long way to go, <laughs> That's long cool. way to go. It, and so, yeah, yeah I, it's just the cool name, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. No, I think you're doing, I think I, you're doing awesome. You know what I think is cool about the name is that, uh, you know, I think it's perfect because, you know, the line speed Jedi, it's like you are the Jedi and, and you know Yoda, right? Yoda was the person, was the teacher. So I mean, okay. you're a teacher now, as well. well. You know what I mean? Okay. So, but what you're talking about, those people that are teaching you, you know, those are kind of the the Yoda, and you are the Jedi. Oh yeah, I like that. How about <laughs> what? What's the Padawan? My kid. Oh, I have out. no. I haven't kept up. Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> I haven't kept yeah, up with the latest I, Star Wars. I haven't either. But there's some Padawan as a. That's what my kid calls himself. Oh, okay. So, and, well, we'll have to do it. Yeah, uh, he, by yeah. the way, is an excellent caster for a, for a kid. And how, just, how old is he? He just turned 15, but I've got pictures of him cast, uh, Skagit casting like when he was like little. I mean, you know, seven or eight and, uh, or six, you know. And he is... He's got tons of talent, and he loves to fish and cast. And uh, he's in a, in a lot of my, or in, he's in a few of my videos. So that's been oh, cool. And my daughter, my daughter, films for me with my, you know, she's she is, does so good. You know, she'll be out there just freezing her fingers <laughs> off. You know, and I'm like, okay, did you get that one? Uh, okay, one more. You know, okay. Try to get this line going across there, you know, and she just hangs in there. And, and so it's kind of a family deal. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it's, yeah. I, I, it's, it's cool. I, yeah. I'm, I'm it's, very lucky, very fortunate. That's, no, that's super neat. I mean, it's super cool having the, the family connection for sure. Um, what is, you know, I mean, you mentioned from the beginning of the show that kind of your early kid bucket list was, you know, getting up to, to uh, Canada and that's in steelhead fishing. I mean, now at the stage you are in your life, do you do you have that bucket list or that that one destination you'd love to go to somewhere around the world and and uh, and fish for? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, after that, my you know, a lot of the guys that you guys that you've interviewed are are our guides, you know, and my guiding, I, I actually started my outdoor career kind of as a deer and elk and lion guide in oh, Colorado. Wow. And then ended up in, I ended up in, in Alaska guiding for, you know, sheep and moose and bear and caribou. And, Jeez. and, uh, you know, I started off as a moose packer up there, you know, backpacking, bull you know big huge hind quarters of bull moose wow. across three miles of tundra just ridiculous stuff but i i that's what i did and then later back in montana and stuff and 
But when I was in Alaska, I was more into the hunting and stuff than the fishing. I'm, we mm-hmm. did fishing because – You had to. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the guy oh. I worked for, I, I, I commercial fished up there for a few years, and then I, I didn't like that. And I ended up, uh, when it wasn't hunting season, I, I worked for this pipe layer, and he had like – two airplanes so we'd fly across the inlet and i had a super cub at the time so we'd you know i'd we'd go he'd grab a guy from work and take us fishing across the inlet we'd salmon fish or one time my cub was in the shop and he and my dad and my brother came up to see me and he's like well you can just fly the 14 which is like a super a big super cub and i'll take the other airplane so he let me fly his airplane with my brother in it and we flew down and landed on a sandbar and we caught silvers like crazy but he i mean he's a mentor one of my best friends and he we i mean we fished and we flew and we oh my how how did now did we miss something here as far as the flight so you you were flying a plane uh, yeah, back uh, uh, then in my Alaska days, so, I did. So how did I, how did you get get to a point where you're flying planes? Well, I I went to work for this this hunting lodge up there. I was I was a horse wrangler because my you know my guiding and stuff a lot of the time included horses and stuff, and so I was the horse wrangler and packer, and I I mean I knew. Two, two really good bush pilots. One guy who was absolutely crazy. One guy who uh, we hit it off. We came great friends. And I went to the Arctic with him out of Kotzebue to hunt moose. And he'd, he'd fly us in on the – we were up in the squirrel and the no attack drainages, I think. And he'd – He'd fly us back in there and drop us off to guide hunters. Or one time he flew us out to the squirrel and we did some grayling fishing. Anyway, when you're guiding in Alaska, it's like if if you're ever going to do something, you got to have an airplane. So I was, hmm. after hunting season, I stayed on as a caretaker for a lodge. You know, so I was back there feeding horses and and calling the weather in. It was a FAA weather station and uh i wanted to learn to fly in the worst way so i went down and got my license and just learned how to fly tail draggers and then i got a cub and i flew it around up there for a while had it up there off and on back and forth what's the cub it's a super cub that's just it's a uh Bush yeah, plane. it's a Piper Super Cub, and it's a it's neat because you can like you can pack out the major part of a moose in one of those things, and they're just tiny, but they're they're a workhorse uh, bush plane float planes that they yeah they're float planes or they put them on the on the tundra tires and yep. land on the gravel bars, you know, and and you got into so <laughs> you just went and picked up your license. I mean, the, what, doesn't that entail like thousands of hours of uh, flying, or, or is it different, or was it different back then? No, it doesn't. It to get a private license is only like, uh, well, my brother soloed in like six hours, and I soloed in like thirteen, but I was flying a tail dragger. I've learned to fly in like a 54 Stinson. It was an old fabric tail dragger, super cool airplane. Wow. But uh, yeah, it was, but it was like 40, 50 hours, I think. It's, that's amazing. It doesn't, so it's like, that's yeah. A, that's it, amazing. So, I mean, I'm just thinking of myself up there and like, okay. I'm going to get 50 hours of uh, training or whatever, and then I'm going to be up there flying a plane. I mean, that just seems like, wow, a pretty uh, <laughs> crazy, impressive everything. Well, it's kind of – well, when you're when you're up there and, like, the, these guys fly up there, you, you just that's, – that's how you get everywhere up there, hmm. and you go 
Oh my gosh. I, I wish I have seen guys do I, I, I watched this Bush pilot. Uh, he was a very good friend of mine. He's still alive. Crazy guy. Fly in. He had a helio courier, which is a a cool big airplane on floats, but this thing was so old that it backfired all the time. <laughs> Sweet. He so I he dropped me off at this strip and I I stayed there feeding horses for a few days and and so they dropped me a note and they said uh you know get the horses and fly up to Sticks Lake and meet the guy I won't say his name yeah. <laughs> meet him he's got like the hunters with him so I get the horses caught and I ride up there with a string of pack horses to this place I'd never been. And and Jimmy comes flying in and there is a horrendous crosswind on this little lake. And he he comes in all cattywampus <laughs> in a crosswind and 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 he has to do a go around because he's the approach wasn't right. And so he nails the throttle and the thing backfires. And he barely climbed out of there with a load of moose hunters in there. Jeez. And and oh yeah, he he aborted the mission, I think, which for him was was very good. And I spent the night in the wall tent there with with horses waiting for whatever was supposed to happen next. So, uh, hmm. but yeah, crazy. Yeah. Crazy. It, he, he's probably one. Here's a story. <laughs> he, he was a notorious poacher besides being a guy oh, and yeah. a bush pilot, which yeah. is, which was probably somewhat normal up there. Well, he was. There was a couple of guys that were like I th- they they had they had bad problems psychologically. Like, uh, yeah. Like, I'm not talking about Jimmy. Well, Jimmy just a different cat. Totally. But he flies up in a in a Taylor craft, which is like an A5 horse uh, fabric airplane, and lands on this bench. Uh, a behind, way up behind this lodge where I worked, and crashed crashed his tailor craft, which hmm. is which happens all the time. Oh, really? But he broke broke his. He has his little boy with him, and he broke his pelvis. Who? And now this is just a story, but I I have pretty good sources. It, so he he crawls back to this lodge with his kid and the lodge owners there. And since he was flying and hunting where he was not really welcome, it's oh. like the lodge owner wouldn't, wouldn't let him in. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know if he radioed for help or sure. what, but Ooh, that's intense. Uh, crazy. There's, yep. It's, That's the story I got from a very reliable yeah. resource. So anyway, yep, yep, no, different, I, different world, and uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, I would love to go back. Yeah, well, and but thing is, it's like I'm kind of scared to even get it in a float plane because uh, I'm a lot older and and know a lot more stuff. And like, <laughs> you hit a log in a float plane and you're toast. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, you know, it's merge log, so I'm not sure how I'm going to make it happen. But I want to take Charlie up there, and you know, I want to go up with my family and and see some really good old friends oh, cool. and uh, and fish. Cool, cool. Well, yeah, well, maybe. Uh, yeah, Tim, we're uh, we're about there. I mean, the, I, I could talk for forever about the, these stories. I'd love to. Uh, maybe we can get get you back on here another time, and we can chat more about some of your uh, some of the stuff here. This is. This is good stuff, but, uh, yeah, I want to, uh, before we get out of here, um, I was hoping you could, uh, maybe let us know other than maybe getting back up to Alaska eventually, if what else you have going on in the next six months, anything we can 
you know, keep an eye out for. It sounds like you've been you've done some tournament casting in the past. Any, anything we can expect from you? I would love to go up to. I have never made it personally to the to Poppy's Clave on the Clearwater, oh, and yeah. and it's a kind of an informal thing. I want to do that, and I would really like to see him get another uh, tournament at the road. They did the Rose Tournament, Netcast did, and I would really think it would be cool to have a casting tournament at the Westmoreland Ponds in Portland oh, yeah. again. That'd but for awesome. now, you know, I'm just hoping to make it. Uh, I got some excellent fishing buddies that are just phenomenal, and uh, they're good fishermen, and I want to get on the Deschutes, want to get on the North Santa Am. Mm-hmm. Maybe the um, – well, I got to get Charlie and I want Charlie to, to catch one on the swing. Yep. So I plan on doing uh, as many as many videos. I'm going th- – I'm learning some stuff right now with my own casting that I hope to share, break mm-hmm. down, and that uh, actually Peter Charles helped me with years ago, and now oh, wow. it's coming full circle, and I want to – I'm got, I've got just some different casting videos. Kind of, they're kind of like micro parts of the cast that that I think will help people because it's helped me, you know, thinking I'm doing one thing with my body, but actually when you watch on video, mm-hmm. you're doing the the exact opposite. Oh wow! So we're going to be talking about a lot of that kind of. Huh. No, it's cool. Kind of stuff. That's cool. Yeah, I love the. It's cool when you, you're documenting. You can watch it. I uh, the next next week I have a, a person coming on Barney who's gonna. We did a little bit of a, a casting lesson on the river, and and I think he's gonna. Oh, not nice. Yeah. nice. Well, it's not uh, it's not video. We're gonna try to talk about it in the podcast next week, but it's pretty right. cool because he's gonna you know talk about some of those things. So uh, no, it sounds like you got some uh, good stuff coming up here and. I'm excited to keep in touch with you, and uh, you know, I, you, you shared a ton of uh, awesome resources. I mean, I can't even keep up. I'm gonna have to actually catch up with you after the show to get all those names down and make sure I have all the links correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And and I can give the, the usernames. I mean, I don't want everybody stealing my stealing my guys, but uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm no. For, very, I mean, I I I I'm kind of kidding, but yeah, but for sure, uh, I got like. <laughs> A few things I want to share that will probably help your any beginner guys if you got like two minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Two <laughs> minutes is that all? Good thing. Question. Yep. All right. You, you want to? Okay. You, go for it. First, first of all, read "Swinging Winter Steel" by Ed Pages or Ed Ward on Spay Pages. Okay. Watch "How to Set the Hook While Swinging." Uh, by Trevor Kovich of OPSD Skagit. Mm-hmm. Read everything written by uh, Robert Gillespie and watch all of his videos. Hmm. I think it's Robert Gillespie. Mm-hmm. Robert Gillespie watches YouTube videos, especially the incline uh, exercise. That, that guy is hmm. very good. And... Uh, Yeah, that, that, I think I, I wanted to drop those value bombs for your guys that are really uh, good, you know, looking for for yep. how to learn some really good stuff. That is that is huge, and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put those uh, those links in the show notes so people can, can uh, go directly to them. And uh, yeah, Tim, well, uh, I guess uh, you know I have to let you go here, but uh, before I do, where uh, can people find you if they have questions or want to follow up with you further? Uh, you can go to, you know what, buddy, I don't even know how to get a hold of me online, speedjedi.com. That oh, yeah? shows you how bad I am. Leave a comment for me on one of the articles. Okay. That would be the best. Or Skagitmeister on Spay Pages or, uh, Timmy Rollins at gmail.com. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Email me. You can call me at five four one five eight eight zero five zero five if you have a question. Nice. Uh, yeah. Any way you can. Yeah. This is great. Now this is uh, 
I think becoming the uh, one of the ultimate resource uh, shows for sure. So, so yeah, Tim, I appreciate you uh, sharing and coming on and spending some time here, and uh, you know, kind of, and also documenting your, you know, like we talked about your your story and what you're doing online. So, uh, looking forward to keeping up in touch with you, and uh, I'm excited to share this with everybody who's out there who hasn't heard of yet. Okay, yeah, I appreciate that. And if you, I'll try to. Uh... If you have any questions, just email me and I'll hit you with those links. Okay. And uh, if you have any questions about the links or any any whatsoever, just email me and I'll, I'll get you what you need. Perfect. Perfect. All right, Tim, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Yeah. Th- thank you very much. All right. Uh, yeah. Really cool. Thank you, buddy. All right. See ya. See ya. So there you go. If you want to find all the show notes with all the links we covered, just go to wetflyswing.com slash 27. It would be exceptional if you could leave a quick iTunes review for the show. You can go to wetflyswing.com slash review to find directions on how to leave a rating and review. The reviews help get the word out to other anglers and fishermen and hopefully will help maybe a few more people get their first steelhead. Thanks again for stopping by to check out the show today. I'm looking forward to catching up with you soon and hope to connect with you online or on the river. Later. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com. And if you found this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes.